What's a function? Something you put an input in and an output comes out of it. There you go. So we're going to put inputs into these x's. All these x's are going to be exactly the same, whatever that input is that we're putting in there. Uh, so here I'll show you a negative 1 so that you can see the order and how the negative sign plays into it. And then I want you to do the rest of these. Uh, so, we have negative 1 cubed, then we multiply by 2. The order of operations is agreed upon. We're all agreeing to use PEMDAS, right? So we're going to do exponents before we do multiplication. And when we look at this, we're not going to multiply 2 times negative 1, and then take that to the third, because that would be multiplication before exponents. So we do the exponent first. What's negative 1 to the third mean? Negative 1. Not what is it, but what does it mean? negative 1 times Right, so negative 1, and this should help you with the signs. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, but times a third negative 1, we get negative 1. So any negative number that goes in there gets cubed, should come out negative, right? Three negatives multiplied together. So 2 times negative 1, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5, plus 6, so negative 2, plus 8, plus 6. 14 minus 2, 12. I, I see a mistake. Can I call you on it? Oh, you do? Yep. Wait, let me give me a chance to catch it myself. Right. Um, I don't see it. What is it? You're supposed to write um, 3 times negative 1 squared. So that would make the ah, negative. Good. You got me. Yep. So that negative 1 squared would be positive. Negative 3 times positive 1 would be negative 3. All right, be agility. Nice catch. And uh, so 5 minus 3 would be 2. So we just get 6. Two times negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 5 times negative 2 plus 6. Okay. Negative 2 cubed means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative, negative, eight. negative 8, which makes a 16 yeah. positive. So 2 times negative 8. No, it's going to be negative 16. Oh, well. yeah. The 8 is going to be negative since it's to the third power. Right, but this is positive. Yeah, see, that's positive. So we're going to make a positive 16. 16. Negative 16. <laughs> positive. positive times negative is negative. <laughs> oh, but it's to the third. <laughs> Wait. We already did to the third Wait, power. We used the third eight. power there on the negative two. Negative two times negative two times negative two. This is positive eight. And then positive eight times negative two. Or sorry, positive four. Excuse me. Positive four times negative two is negative eight. So negative eight. Third power, done. We did it. We raised negative two to the third. Or ne yeah, negative two to the third power. Now we multiply that. Result by 2, we get negative 16. Negative 2 squared, well that's negative 2 times negative 2, <laughs> positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Any number squared then would be positive because it gets an even number multiplied together. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 3 times 4, negative 5, 12. Yeah. Negative 5 times negative 2, yeah. positive 10. Plus 6. Okay, plus 6, so we could bring a 16 down here. Negative 16 plus 16. Negative 12. Negative 12. What? What? Wait, for which one? It's negative 2, guys. Wait, for which one? Which one, which one are we doing again? Negative, negative, negative two. 2. Okay. Let's look at the closest. Wait, shut up. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, so from, from the, six, the negative 16 minus 12.
Negative 16 and positive 16 just cancel each other out. You can see it, you get negative 12. <coughs> times negative 3 is positive 15. I'll just throw that there. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 27. 2 times negative 27 is negative 54. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 27 plus 15 plus 6. So negative 781 plus 15. Okay, all that are left are zero, one, and two. Your table okay. should get finished very, very soon. I'm done. Cool. So, we should get six again, zero, and zero. Number eight. Which of the three of you needs to come and sit here? I did do that. I got the I got the bottom of the Someone will if we can't be quiet. Mr. Stewart, I only got the first one. I got all the others. That's good. Yeah. I got every other one. I got everyone right except the yeah, the negative three. Okay. Now I got fifty nine. So what we're learning about here are functions. What's a function again? Something in and then you get something out. Okay. Uh how many times can we do this, theoretically? An infinite number. Okay. Um, So like we said, we can do this an infinite number of times. So we can represent the inputs and outputs uh, as, how do we represent a single input output on the plane here? Input is x. Input is x. Output is y. Output is y. So let's take negative 1, 6, for example. How do I represent that in the plane? Go over 1 and up or down 6. Down 6? Down 1. Down one? Yes. What? What? No. no over. No. Oh, okay. Go up okay. from there. Turn left. Yeah. Down six. Okay. You go up six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. And I use. It's not saying. What's this called here? Where are you going? What's that thing called? That is a point. That is a point. Okay. So that point, where that point is, tells us about the input and output of this function. Input negative one, and you'll get out six. Yeah. Okay. If you input zero, you'll get out six as well. Input one, you'll get out zero. Input two, you'll get out zero. Negative two, negative 12. Negative three and negative 60. You need a bigger chart. We would need a bigger, a bigger plane to put these on. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to go ahead and draw these points that I have. Just that doesn't have to be fantastic, it just looks like this. These five points. Okay. And we know that those are not all of the points, right? When we get done with this graph, it has some kind of a shape, right? It, it's, there's more to it than just these few points. That's what I want you to decide. I want you to, to draw your best guess of what this graph will look like when you get all done with it. 
When we do that, whether we do it correctly or do it incorrectly, we're going to learn something about functions, about their graphs, about what their graphs actually represent, about where these points probably be. So let's do that. It shouldn't take long. Just a couple of lines perpendicular to each other. Plot some points that look like they're in the right spot. And then draw the rest of the graph. 